visits historic Columbia, Tennessee, located just 40 miles south of Nashville. Welcome inside Ebonite's Galaxy Lanes for the finals of the Lady Ebonite Classic. The competition begins tonight with a breakthrough game featuring Kim Terrell, Kathy Doran Lizzie, and defending champ Leanne Barrett. The one with the highest score will break through to face last week's champion Carolyn Doran Ballard in head-to-head -head competition, and the winner of that semifinal match will take on 10-time titleist Liz Johnson in the championship match. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for tuning in. Top story tonight is Leanne Barrett. She's defending champ here and she's won it three times in the past. She's looking for her fourth title on the season, which would put her two up in that important category for the Bowler of the Year race. Plus, if she finishes in the top three tonight, she'll break that million dollar barrier in career earnings. It's quite a plateful and here to talk about that is my broadcast partner, 15 time titleist Kim Adler. Kim, all that potential for Leanne Barrett. What is she going to focus on? She's going to focus on the same thing she's focused in on all week, and that is the task at hand. She doesn't want to think about the potential of being player of the year. She's come full circle this year, and I compare it to her namesake, which is Boomer Barrett. Like a boomerang, she, her career, she's come full circle. And uh, she started in her early in her career with a great amount of success and then she had some lean times but it's come back to her like a boomerang and she's savoring the potential of this being the best year of her career. Well, our number four seed, Kathy Doran Lizzie, is looking for her moment to shine. She's comfortable in the spotlight as one of my co-hosts, but this week, Kim, she stepped out into the sunlight, and boy, did she love it. She was positively glowing last night. Uh, she, was, she was just sparkling like a diamond, and that's how I would compare her, like the four C's for diamond comparison. That's how we compare Kathy Doran Lizzie with the three C's for, for success this week, and those three C's would be calmness, consistency, and confidence. She's trying to improve her bowling game and one of those improvements needs to be stepping out of the shadow of her sister Carolyn Doran Ballard tonight might be proving to be her ultimate test she's doing pretty well in her test so far tonight she's trailing by just nine pins Kim Terrell in the lead by nine Leanne Barrett trailing Kim Terrell by 14 pins she just made a ball change. That's the uh, first frame she's thrown that ball, in, and it looks a lot better than the last shots. That was a big double that actually puts Kathy in the lead right now momentarily. Leanne Barrett up. She's on a strike as well. All three ladies struck in the fifth frame, but Kim, it was ugly before that. It was. It looks like the lanes really haven't settled in yet for consistent shots. <laughs> as well so everybody's picking up the pace I believe that little bit of break before we came on was probably a good thing and those of you at home like we said you really didn't miss much it wasn't very good those first five frames the only thing you missed was Britt Savage uh, she used to sing background for Garth Brooks and she recently debuted at the Grand Old Opry she treated us to a national anthem and it was wonderful Great way to start the Going up high. Interesting there. That lane seems to be the oilier lane of the two, and Kim was pretty good with her speed, with slower speed, and it, it just didn't work out. One title for Kathy Dorn Lizzie that came back in 1999, the Three Rivers Open. And as you mentioned, she's really been working. She knows now she has to take charge of everything herself. She, she had a a little help from Del Ballard this week as well, but it was more or less just that push to trust her instincts. Exactly, and that's a hard thing to do when you're out there. 2.11 average for Kim Terrell. The scores were all over the board. Kim Terrell actually shot at 300 in the midst of a couple 160s, 50s, and a shot there on the spare, sliding by the 360. Three six tens were a difficult spare this week. Uh, if you got the ball, the plastic ball, to the right of, say, the third arrow, you had a chance that it was going to slide too much. 214 average on the week for Leanne Barrett. And don't forget, this is the match. The breakthrough game is the one Leanne Barrett has to get through to break the million dollars tonight. Focusing in on that task at hand, I hope she's continuing to do that tonight. <laughs> to strike here. I know she really wants to do it at an Ebonite tournament. She's on Ebonite staff, and it would mean a lot to her. Of, co of course, 14 years with Ebonite now. She's on a, we're on a wood surface this week. The uh, volume is, is pretty light, 23.79 microliters. 39 feet, a little bit on the longer side with the defense oil by Kegel Oil. And 
hopefully it holds up tonight. And it is a sport bowling pattern. It is. 1.8 to 1 ratio. And I understand the scores were very different pair to pair. They were, but pretty much this whole field stayed within the realm of a 170 to 220 average for scores across the board. It was important this week to keep away from those low games, which was very possible in some of these pairs to, to score a 140 game. Yeah, that was the key to do that. Leanne Barrett's low game of the week. Actually, she had a 151. Kathy Doran Lizzie a 152, and Kim Terrell a 153, so. They had to shake those off and get the big games in there. Leanne Barrett. Was Leanne is playing. There seems to be a little oil carrying down now. Kathy Dorn oh. with the shot. <laughs> Making the two pin on that 2-5. By the hair in her chinny chin chin. She'll be able to breathe now for a moment. Meanwhile, Leanne Barrett now has the lead by seven pins over Kathy Dorn Lizzie. Kim Terrell now working on a strike. Needing to get another strike here in the eighth to put herself back in the match games I was talking about in qualifying. She was in jeopardy of not making the cut. Shot a 162, 189 the last round and then went 300. Followed it by 150. Nice last round there. You know, we only took 25 or actually 24, top 24 this week to make a check. So uh, not those extra eight spots that we normally have to cash. So she was thinking 24 all the way. Kathy Doran Lizzie trailing by seven. She's in the ninth frame, really needs to set up a strike. Come on. This has been the hooking lane, and she got the speed up on that shot, and that was, that was perfect execution there. So Kim Terrell changing balls to shoot her spare. Interestingly enough, as I mentioned earlier, the 3 6 10 was a little difficult. The 10 pin was very easy, so. Kind of unusual. Oh, yeah. You know, Kim Terrell fortunate to be in this round. She was 13th going into the last round of competition and averaged 226 for that last round to make it into the show. She mentioned something about having um, the ability to miss right or left to get a strike, which is an unusual thing as a bowler out here. You just hope for one direction, and she got lucky to have those both ways. It relaxed her quite a bit. And Barrett, ninth frame on four to Get that skin on that right hand. I think she looked a little surprised that that one struck, but she'll take it. Now puts her up by 17 pins. Kim Terrell set up frame. Kim just really only found it for a couple frames in the middle of the game. This is a hard one for the Ebonite team that's surrounding us right now. They're all cheering on all the staff that's here, Kim and, and Leanne. And so um, hard to, to let one person win this match. Well, Kathy and Lizzie, happy with this performance. Oh, needed to push that one out of there. She wanted to say hello to all of her friends at Jersey Lanes and Star Lanes because she does a lot of practicing out there. I heard on the break she was doing a little painting as well as practicing, too. You know, you have to mix it up. Oh. And it has gone from bad to worse for Kim Terrell, and she told us she's been having trouble, trouble the last couple of weeks finding the right combination. It appears to be having a little trouble, a trouble tonight. Of course, they change a lot quicker. If you don't have a, a game plan right away, it's hard to keep up with those changes. Leanne Barrett now in the 10th frame. She's on a double. We're going to need some pin count. That's enough pin count. Ten of them. Boy, did she turn this match around. Kathy with a good, good, solid performance. 205 for Kathy Brown Lizzie. Leanne Barrett. She will advance, but not only that, she just went over the million dollar mark. A sigh of relief.
Leanne now with six in a row. And she said, all, all year, it would be nice to break that here at the MI tournament. I don't think how those things sometimes happen. So Leanne Barrett has the high score in the breakthrough game. And she will take on last week's champ, Carolyn Doran Ballard, when we return. Final score of the breakthrough game, Leanne Barrett, 231, Kathy Doran Lizzie, 205, and Kim Terrell, 168. As Leanne Barrett earned that million, Bob Reed of Ebonite and Brian Purcell made a special presentation to Leanne. It's a necklace with the Ebonite symbol with one diamond for each year she's been a staff member. That would be 14 diamonds. What a beauty that is on a beautiful lady. Million dollars in her career, and we're joined in the booth by Bob Reed, the Vice President of Marketing. And there's a look at the millionaires. Leanne Barrett, obviously the newest, that's thus far with th third place money. She could improve upon that if she wins the next match or two. Four millionaires so far, Bob. Must have been a special moment for you as we see, obviously, maybe the emotion affected Leanne a bit. But well, we hope not, but uh, it was a special moment. Um, obviously, it's the uh, Lady Ebonite Classic, and it's in our bowling center, and we have about 100 Ebonite employees here that drove uh, 120 miles down from Hopkinsville to uh, see the tournament. So it's pretty exciting. So a tailgate party outside for all of them? Yeah, we had a tailgate party for about 400 outside. Well, I understand that you closed down second shift or something so they could be here. Did you we, do that? Yes, we did. We had wow. we had so many people that wanted to come down that we had to close, uh, close down the second yeah. shift. Great shot there. That was an amazing scare, one of those difficult ones you always love to make. Yes. It skids just the proper amount. I mean, uh, we mentioned that 3610 was hard enough to make, and, and she here she grabs the four pin with it. What a way to open the match. Sorry to cut you off there, Bob, but that no was problem. a huge that was fabulous. scare. Carolyn Doran Ballard, 13 years on tour, 19 titles. What a, what a year this woman had last year, the reigning player of the year. <laughs> And Bob Carolyn won here for her first singles title back in 94 and hasn't won an Ebonite title yet. What is it? You know, put a lot of pressure on her or what? A lot of pressure. <laughs> do you? I heard you're that kind of guy sometimes. Well, actually, <laughs> they put the pressure on themselves. We don't have to do much. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, she leaves a seven pin here to start, and as she's backing off, maybe distracted from this large crowd, Bob. I mean, down both sides of the lanes, 14 tournaments, two titles. 11 top 10s and eight shows, that's this year so far. She made 18 shows last year. But the crowd's all the way down both sides, kind of an arena setting, very neat. And I want to see you really quick and let you talk about this. You had another event here, the Blue Gray Bowl. We did. This, uh, <clears throat> this past summer, we had uh, 28 all-state bowlers from the state of Illinois come down for a two-day clinic. And one of the things that they requested was uh, at the end of the clinic to see what they learned to have a tournament. And we said, with yourselves or with somebody else? And they said, well, with ourselves. And we said, how about if we could get the All-Staters from the state of Tennessee to come bowl you? They liked it, and, and with two and a half weeks' notice, we, we staged the first interstate high school bowling championship. Come we on! It, we call it the Blue Gray Bowl. And obviously, the Yankees in blue shirts and the Reds in gray shirts. And it, was, it was pretty exciting. That is, that's wonderful. And as Carolyn strikes, you were looking at the, the spokesperson for high school bowling. So we are. Hopefully she can motivate a lot more high school students to come out and get involved with the sport. She's certainly trying. And Barrett, number two, as you just saw in average and in points, she's backing off as well. And this is a much larger crowd than we've had for a few weeks. So I think that they're taking just a little time. Um, I, I know from when we were down doing the opening of the show, Bob, a lot of people waving, talking, <laughs> yeah, a lot going on out there. You never can tell what an Ebonite employee is going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing, it's just different. So Leanne Barrett, don't forget, one thing down, she broke the million, but she's still going for that fourth title of the year, which would be huge in that board of the year race. Carolyn Doran Ballard, one of her competitors in that race. She got that speed up on that shot, uh, which she was missing, I think, on that first shot, just coming back from the break. And I think she's back up to tempo now. We should look forward to a few more strikes out of Leanne. 
How are you liking the tournament so far, Bob? Are you happy you sponsored it? Oh, absolutely. It's been just a great week. It's been great competition uh, all week. And even match play the last couple of days has just been tight. It's been just super. Leanne Barrett with 26 titles. Match is all even right now on our mini scoreboard, sponsored by Travelodge Hotels. Spare in a strike, and Leanne with a double to take the early lead. Got a little lucky there with that trip four, but I'm sure she's sitting down and taking it. Carolyn, Carolyn will be able to answer, possibly, to keep the match all square. Bob, a lot of remodeling. You just finished this under the gun here at Ebonite Galaxy. <coughs> well, you were here last week. I was. <coughs> you know that we were uh, doing a lot of last minute preparation, but we got it done. I think there's a lot of things hidden behind the scenes that uh, we're not seeing, right? You kind of pushed some things in the background. A I don't know bit. how you cleaned it uh, all up. A little bit. Carolyn's taking a, a break as someone came into the crowd. And, you know, I'm, I just want to point out really quickly, I know people say, well, you know, basketball players shoot at hoops, and with all the things going on in the background, but that's constant movement, and it's expected. The bowlers just something. are not used to, to the movement. Plus, and it's it, sudden and unexpected. Absolutely. Yeah. The vibes for me this week were very positive. This is where I won my first singles title. I was really excited then. I'm really excited now. Also, since then, I haven't won an Ebonite tournament. So tonight, I'm out for revenge. Out for revenge. Do you allow that kind of behavior? She is bowling a fellow staff member. Well, my coaching to uh, my coaching advice to, to both of them just before the uh, just before the match was bowl to win. Ah, oh, <laughs> clever. clever. <laughs> So the match is still all even as Carolyn steps up in the fourth frame, working on two strikes. Come on. Yes. Yeah. 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 lane of the two. She spent a little more time in practice lining up on that lane to begin with, but definitely that left lane favors Carolyn. Leanne Barrett now will try to answer the call in career television versus Carolyn Doran Ballard. She's three and two. In has averaged 221 against her. Carolyn averaging just 207 against Leanne. That's on television. The graphic you just saw was for this year in match play during the week. Six and six. They're all even. Ten pin. Is there a lot of that this week, Kim? A lot of ten pins, a lot of ten pin spares to make. Now we're going to look at what Leanne does with all this fidgeting. You might notice her feet and her hands do a lot. Um, she's aware she needs to get her feet into this unconventional position to alleviate some hip pain that she has. Um, what lessons do we learn from this? I guess you'd say you need to start, set yourself in order to be consistent in your start for your finish. And we're going to show you this fidgeting that she does with her feet. She kind of holds her feet and then unconventional position there and she's moving her hand around it's all related to presetting her start so if you preset you're going to be consistent in your finish and a lot of the athletes out here have some kind of routine and sometimes the motion just keeps them moving some people don't like to just stand completely still and then start that's the um, the bowling waggle Oh, new turn. Ten pin and now a four pin. Now, Bob, you do a lot with the PWBA tour. You do uh, media challenges and tailgate parties. Have those been successful for at night? We think they've been successful. It certainly has brought uh, a lot of fans out to uh, do the tournament that we might not ordinarily see. And, of course, you know we support the, the women's tour quite heavily, and uh, we're extremely happy to do it. We are glad to have you, and thank you immensely for your sponsorship of the tour. And covers up the spare, so Carolyn Doran Ballard now in the lead by 12 pins. Stepping up in the fifth, she can take it to 22 with a strike here. It's starting to look like she is out for revenge.
presetting herself pretty carefully here. She's really trying to not mentally move ahead too quickly in this match and just focus on this one shot. Tough break there, leaving the 6, 7, 10. She just overall got a little slow, a little hesitant there because she knows she has to get it slow to, to deal with the oily lane, but just a little too slow, and this is what happens. Now, this was a makeable spare this week. As we know, Liz Johnson made the 7-10. The 6-7-10 with the ball sliding over as easily as it does this week. She's got a chance. Oh, and that was close. You almost called that one, too. Very, very close. Did you make it this week? I did. Now, I made out of the Greek church, which is close to that, though. I've made four a few times. Just missing that this again. And that split cost Carolyn dearly. She's now down by five through five frames. We'll be right back. Final match, Carolyn Doran Ballard now trailing by just four pins. She had that open frame while we were away. Leanne Barrett with a spare, leaving a two pin light and then a strike. Carolyn backing off right now. A lot going on here this week. It's a good thing that we don't have box in this sport. <laughs> that would be interesting. Look at the averages this week in the right-hand column, what they've averaged overall this season in the left-hand column. Most of the ladies higher this week. Actually, Carolyn down a bit and Barrett down a bit, both of these ladies. Come on. And that just got a little too far right there. There's a oil to the right. We're going to take a look and see how far this ball actually got to the right. She's placing the ball around 14, and it got out past the 10 board, which is the second arrow, and that's the no zone. want to stay away from that area. Actually, the girls started um, in practice today closer to the first arrow, like they had earlier in the week. And it, I guess it just kind of went away, because if it was there, Carolyn would be the first person to be there, playing there. So this is the more playable part of the lane at the moment. Well, she'll try to cover Hope the spare. The and she got it. You know, in, in our grind of everyday life, we sometimes lose sight of what's really important. So I want to take a minute on behalf of PWBA to extend our sympathies to the family of Scott McLaughlin, PWBA player services rep for the past two years on the loss of his grandmother, Harriet Harwood, and the family of Joanne Hoppy, who we work with very closely at Travelodge on the loss of her father, Frank Marinelli. Our prayers go out to both families. And it's difficult when you're on the road and away from family and a lot of things happen. So we right. want to make sure we send our prayers out to those people. And Carolyn Doran Ballard trailing right now by seven pins on our travel lodge scoreboard. Oh my. Ooh, a little tickle there. We've got to really see what happened here with the, with the setup. I think her ball just kind of ran out of energy at the very end there, which left that eight pin. But she got a little luck there. She must have found a penny heads up in the parking lot today. You know, Carolyn also asked that I wish Gigi Wright the best. Carolyn wants to send her best wishes. As she covers up that spare. Did she really find a penny? No, I'm assuming. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne Barrett won three times already this year. Normally, that's a, a huge year, three or four wins. Last year, after Carolyn went in seven, kind of put things in perspective a bit, but... If she had won those three titles last year, she'd be way behind in the race exactly. at this point. Shot here. And that's a double. Puts her up by 18 pins as she heads into the ninth frame. Interesting that Leanne's favorite lane is the right lane and Carolyn's favorite lane is the left lane. They should do well together in a doubles tournament. Actually, Leanne used to be the doubles partner of Kathy Doran Lizzie, Carolyn's sister. Okay, she's stepping up in the ninth, up by 19, or 18, excuse me, can take it to 28 with a strike here. Getting that hand set. She's had a little bit of trouble lately keeping her hand warm, 
so that she can throw a good felt shot off her hand. Yeah. Trip in the four, a lot of four pins going down on lane 21. You know, this is where we can see if Carolyn's push away was in proper form, and I think everything looked pretty good there. Um, she threw, she executed a good shot, but again, the right lane is so much different than the left lane at this point with that extra oil on the right-hand side, right of the second arrow. Yeah, they're showing you the two, oh, two shots, two shots on the same on lane. On the same lane. Yeah, so that you could see the difference in that shot when she left the two, four, five. She made up for it there. And she did. Yeah, and coming up light. Okay, Carolyn Ormella will finish first. Best she could do would be 219 if she strikes out. Well, she doesn't want to overthink this. I can see her trying to figure things out here. She just kind of has to take a little advice from Kathy here and just trust her instincts and just flow with the shot because she has this lane down. Well, she really needs to strike out here to force Leanne Barrett to mark. Remember she said she was out for revenge. Mm, that's a strong word. Placing the ball so far out in front of her and, and keeping too late, just trying to get herself a little earlier in her swing. And she knew she missed it right there in her swing, and she's just trying to recover from it. She's pretty natural at doing that, but that really had no chance. So barely touching the head pin left. She'll attempt to spare this up, but the best she can shoot now is 199. Good luck. Oh, boy. Disaster there for Carolyn Doran Ballard. Not what she wanted to do, so Leanne Barrett will advance. But first, when we return, I'll talk with a special guest to learn more about high school bowling in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. Bowling Col Colleen Franitza, field rep, sat in for Barbara Johnson after she was called away to work. Imagine that. And we had two other very special guests here. From the 101st Airborne and the 86th Bravo Company. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming out and for all you do. Final score of the semifinal match, Leanne Barrett, 236 to Dorn Ballard's 187. Coming up next, Leanne Boomer Barrett tries to take the top step of the ladder away from Liz Johnson in the championship match. Stay with us. For the championship match of the Lady Ebonite Classic. We're at Ebonite's Galaxy Lanes in Columbia, Tennessee. I'm Jan Schmidt, along with Kim Adler. Liz Johnson, top seed of this tournament. And as we know, top seed has won 11 of the 12 singles events this year. Amazing stat. Unbelievable in that position. Because they come in cold, and typically, that's been closer to a 50% range, 60% range, and we're at 92% on top seeds. Any explanation? <laughs> the wind, the air, <laughs> the vibes, I have no idea. All just safe to say that I want to fight out everybody to get into that number one position. Exactly. Leanne Barrett, her seventh show of the year. Come on, sit on it. Just lay not there, didn't knock it down. Not enough help from that pin in the gutter. Need a little more life there. Need somebody down in back there to help her out. You know, she threw a pretty good shot. You know, it's it's just a little transition in the lanes, as we know, in a championship match. Um, you get a little movement of the oil, and so it's time to make a small adjustment for it. Covers it up, no problem. And it was a close one last night. I told you Kim Terrell getting into that match. She defeated Tish Johnson, who really had some tough breaks that last game. Carol Giannotti blocked back from Australia, top 10 after a knee surgery. And we have scorekeeping in the booth with us this week, Rachel Perez and Michelle Feldman, another Ebonite staff member. Leanne in the second frame now, working on that spare. Tripping on lane 21. 
DWBA.com and are one of facelift over the summer and recently unveiled its new look. The beauty runs more than skin deep. It's your information source for PWBA, including schedules, entries, player bios, photos, and scannings. Plus, it displays a complete line of the new PWBA logo merchandise and the live scoring. Make sure you check it out. Please check out our sponsor as well. And another trip for him. And you know, the thing with Liz this week is she had a really unique shot compared to everyone else. Everyone else was um, playing all over the lane from the first, second, third arrow. Liz stayed right in the area she's in now. She's throwing that ball. Six, seven, eight is what she told us she'd be playing, and that's exactly where she is. And that's when you can count on Liz Johnson to make a show or be in the lead because she's so good at doing that. And she's the only one that can be playing that part of the lane per week. I don't know what I do. I, every week I see her play there or, or another area, and I try and play there, and I cannot strike. Well, she just throws harder if she needs to. And she can stay out there. She has a front three, and now's a good time to mention that there's a $10,000 bonus out there for 300 on television by Gary and Linda Feldman, Michelle's grandparents, and Bud Harvard. Oh, you're starting early with those three strikes. I am. I'm, I'm getting it out there right now, and there's some all-time titleist Lisa Wagner. Of course, the most prolific, Alita Sill, 31. Leanne Barrett, 26, pushing for 27 tonight. And Patty Costello, Tish Johnson. Carolyn Doran Ballard, one of those tied at 19. There's four of them there. She was hoping to get to 20. And I'm sure that Leanne is thinking somewhere down the line. Leanne is into the Hall of Fame. Another good shot there from Leanne. See, she made that small adjustment, I believe, and it definitely worked out for her. Well, she is the defending champ here and going for her fourth title of the year against Liz Johnson, who's looking for her first title this season. Look at some of those champions. Lady of Night Classic. There's Leanne last year and the other year she won. Carolyn Dorton Ballard up there. Oh, and Adler. Hmm. Who's that? I Did won you a couple win? times. Wow. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Very nice trophies, too. Yes. Always a good trophy at the Lady of Night Classic. Leanne Barrett trailing by 10. And ouch. 2 8 10. Not really any good way to make this, is there, Kim? You know, she might have made a small adjustment a little further left on the lane, too, to try and compensate for maybe some more hook there, and it just dead skid for her, and that's the result. She, you know, let's give this a run. Let's give the crowd something to cheer on here. Let's see her make this. You think she's going to go for it? No. <laughs> Get those two early on in a match. Definitely, especially on a double. She's on a strike. And she gets two. That, that's important on the strike. You never know when it's going to come back to haunt you. Both of these ladies, we just we started keeping some stats on the shows for this fall, and both of these ladies on one show are at 50% on their striking ratio. So they're striking half of the time. Leanne Barrett, 80% on spares. The one she missed was a 310, a split. Liz Johnson, 100%. No open spares. That only threw one telecast this year, this year though. Well, we just had a graphic up there concerning her being the third woman to shoot a 300 on television. Maybe she's going to become the fourth as well. Maybe, and she received $50,000 for that 300 wow. from Travelodge. Nice bonus. The other two were Car Honeychurch and, of course, Michelle Feldman, who unfortunately did it before there was a bonus available. Fourth TV show and eight top tens. Not a bad season. She's been struggling off and on with a little bit of lower back problem. She has a herniated disc. Great shot there. She really stayed down with that shot. She's trying to stay a little slower on that lane compared to the, to the first lane, compared to the right lane. Um, she's staying slow, which is something she's been working on. Leanne Barrett the travel partner of Kim Terrell, who you saw earlier, and she said that works well for her. She feeds off of Kim a lot, they talk a lot, and it's definitely helped her this year, and that's true in many cases. It helps when you room and get along with somebody. Your success can be passed along. They have the same temperament, and it just kind of breeds within the room and the traveling. I know you and I experienced that when we roomed for a period of time. I won my first title, and you won yours, right? I won my first title. Yes immediately following or we ate well in the restaurants for a couple weeks there yeah, so a lot of finding a good roommate very very important you have to get along live together yes do your routines so. Leanne Barrett now 
Under the gun here, she'll need to continue striking. Taking a little extra time there. Oh, well, the four-pin trip. Yeah, we saw the trip four there. Leanne's one and two on television career versus Liz Johnson. Leanne only averaging 198 against Liz Johnson on TV. And Liz averaging 229 against Leanne Barrett on TV. Pretty big difference there. Now Liz has just been what we consider the epitome of consistency here. She's trying to keep it at 6, 7, 8 in that range. Right up 6, 7 then. Little trip 4 there, same shot. Are these the same three shots? <laughs> and those were her last three. Oh, Five. Okay. That was okay. definitely not the same shot. In fact, you could see the ball was slowing down at the pins a lot more so than those three plays. So that tells us that she, she definitely got a little slow on that shot. A little carry over from the left lane. Well, that turned things around very quickly here. At least put Leanne Barrett a little bit closer to the match. She takes the wood, smart, to take the two pins. Now, you would never know it by looking at Liz's face that she's probably a little upset with her shot there. She's very cool, calm. You, you never really tell what her emotions are. She's one of those poker faces. And uh, she's, she's pretty much emotional like the rest of us when it comes to this. Thinking about a good shot here. She's in the lead now by 27. Max score possible for her if she strikes out 262. Leanne Barrett 235 as she could do. Ten pin. And she'll change balls and just try to convert the spare. covers it up and we'll return in a moment to see who will be this year's Lady Ebonite. Right now the scales are tipped for Liz Johnson's favor. She's in the lead by 27 pins. Active lane. It glows in the dark. Stripes down the lane. Wow, look Big at ball. that. I hope they can uh, direct the direction of my ball hitting <laughs> the pocket with that too. You know, I think they're working on that. While we were away, Leanne Barrett with a double. Liz Johnson leaving a 10 pin sparing up. So Liz in the lead by 16 pins as she steps up in the ninth frame. Oh no. Liz? Oh. oh, okay. All right, look, here's the deal. She picked up the 710 this week. She, she picked it up it. against Maxine it. Nabel and she picked it up on lane 21. Yes, right here on this lane, she picked up the 710 this week. It's her second time in her career. She throws hard enough, but she says she went at the seven pin. She doesn't usually do that. Is she going to go for the seven pin will? this time? I think she's thinking about it. I she's would stepping be. up to the right-hand side of the approach, so she's going for the seven pin. She's going to go for this. Give me a replay here. Throwing it hard. Oh, 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 she got the pin to kick out, and that's how she did it the last time. Rolled across. She I was thinking she, about it. I don't think she threw it hard enough. But she took out that imaginary four pin on the rack. No, the four pin wasn't there, unfortunately. She gave it a whirl, and you'd have to. I mean, what are the odds? Yeah, it's going to exactly. happen right there, same lane. Tough break and for Liz Johnson. Before we forget, I know Conrad and Karen, Liz's parents, I know you're watching at home, and Liz wants to wish you guys a happy anniversary. And also, Conrad, you old, you old hoot, I guess it's your <laughs> birthday, too, so happy birthday. OK, Leanne Barrett now stepping up in the ninth. Finishers that we have this week, Maxine Nabel, Australia, always in the top 24, and Shelly Shermer, uh, she racked up a perfect no-tap score, 300-300-300 in the program. Fellow Floridian, Marcia Kamrowski, and another solid finish for Karen Stroud in 23rd. Perfect shot here. She's perfectly lined up, great shot, fully executed, very confident. 
That was huge. That gave her the lead. Leanne Barrett now in the lead by seven pins. She can strike this one out and take it right away from Liz Johnson. The top seed dominance in jeopardy here. Liz can't believe it. Interesting, making it interesting. I hear people in the background Showing muttering. Showing a little emotion she there, yeah. That. Now, she, this is possible. There's a way to make this as a right-handed bowler, kind of hooking it as a backup ball, as a, a left-handed exactly. bowler, as well as throwing it pretty hard, which I think she can do, too. Well, if she doesn't... If she doesn't spare this, Liz Johnson will just need a mark. She takes one. For a score of 198, Liz Johnson will need a mark. Now, this has not been a favorite lane for Liz as of late, with her uh, open in the sixth. And she left a 10 pin in the eighth yes. and spared it. She's got to think somewhat conservatively, but not too much. That fine line. Oh, and not a simple spare. But the back pin, the eight pin, did move off slightly. We're gonna see it here on her shot. She, she was, she was a little hesitant there off her hand, not as clean as the others, and the, it tickled the back pin a little bit. She's hoping it on. Get, get that 10 pin out of there. Okay, now we make the spare. Right, almost this 2 8 10 Leanne just yes. left. But you're right with the 8 pin over a little bit. It should help to make the spare. Yes, if she comes in on the From right, the right side. hand side, yes. A little extra breath. She's got it. She's got it. She covers it up. So right now she'll need just one pin on this ball. It is. It is something about the top seed. It's magic this year. And Leanne, look at the disappointment. It's like, oh, can I just do that shot over? Kind of anticlimactic for Leanne. Yes. Eleven out of twelve. Now I'll make it twelve out of thirteen. That's it. She's got it. So Liz Johnson grabs her first title of the season. Champion. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The championship round finals of the Lady Ebonite Classic are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 87 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Travelodge Hotels, proud to be the official lodging sponsor of the Professional Women's Bowling Association by PWBA.com, new and improved with more advanced and accessible news and information. Liz Johnson is the champion of the Lady Ebonite Classic, final score 205 to 198, and she collects her awards, Bill Scheid, president of Ebonite International with the trophy, and Glenn Pavey, manager of Ebonite's Galaxy Lanes with the check. So Liz Johnson posts her 11th career victory. Remember to tune in next Monday, one hour earlier at 10 p.m. Eastern for the Greater Pasadena Open from Diamond Lanes in Pasadena, Texas. For Kim Adler, I'm Jan Schmidt. Until next week, stay safe. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.